Okay, Mundies. You've been bugging me for nine years. Where's season two? Where's more Wolf Among Us? Well, it finally paid off. Congratulations. Season two, 20 23. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, and I'm back for another Wolf Among Us 2 video. So I always want to thank you guys so much for the support this past week on the trailer upload, the trailer reaction, and the trailer breakdown. I am done covering the trailer. I've done all everything I've needed to do with that, so if you missed any of those videos, card in the top right, description down below. But you'll definitely see videos on specific things I noticed in the trailer inevitably. But today, my friends, we're going to be discussing everything we know from that Wolf Among Us 2 reveal event we got literally almost a week ago. There is a lot of details, it was a 24 minute stream, a lot of you guys may have not watched it, a lot of you guys may have just seen the trailer. I was someone that watched the whole thing, and if you did not see that whole thing, you missed a lot of details. And I wrote a bunch of notes down on specific things I, you know, picked up on and read in that. So, this is from the Telltale livestream. And this is basically everything you need to know. We are still probably, in all likeliness, a full year away from this game releasing. Could be even longer, depending on COVID and everything that happens. I still do believe, even if the game is slated for 2023, I still believe it's coming out early next year. My February release date prediction may not be correct anymore, but I'd say by spring, I definitely think the game will be out. Barring any setbacks, of course. So, if you guys do enjoy this video, please be sure to drop a like and subscribe. Join about the 50% of people that are subscribed by hitting that red subscribe button. Please turn the notification bell on, and please, I want everybody that's watching, if you could leave a comment, anything that you'd like me to discuss from the trailer, I'm going to bring straw pulls back very, very soon. Might be after this next upcoming video. So, please, leave a video topic. I'm going to start putting topics together for my future theories. We're going to start getting theories up pretty dang soon, so... You know, even though we do have a long time to wait until the game releases, I still have a lot I want to discuss, and this trailer gave us so much we can talk about. So, hope you guys do enjoy this. Follow me on social media down below to stay connected with us, and I hope you guys enjoy this. Let's go for a thousand likes. We're actually in the game right now, so this is a virtual set. Uh, this is Godmothers, which is a quintessential New York dive bar. But now redone in beautiful Unreal Engine, one of the things that we're also excited about, especially seeing the trailer, it's like how faithful it is to the original season one, but you know, enhanced graphics, but still an amazing story, which is why we're all here for Telltale. We love the story and the characters. So one of the first things I want to take note of is that this is the new engine. What you're seeing in this trailer is the Unreal Engine. The Telltale tool RIP is done. This is why you're going to notice it's going to look significantly better. The old Telltale tool, man. Telltale used that pretty much till their deathbed with The Walking Dead Final Season, which is kind of crazy. But yes, this is an Unreal Engine, but they wanted to try and keep the old faithful look. So you're still going to notice the game is still going to look true to its old self, but it is definitely going to look very much enhanced. So I can't wait to see more footage, especially when we get to gameplay, hopefully in months time. So Nick, tell us a bit about the story. Like, what, what can you tell us about season two? Uh, well, you know, as we saw in the trailer, Baby's um, in anger management. He's um, kind of dealing with a lot of those issues still. And, um, you know, season two is, is you know, still a, a prequel to the comics, but it takes place about six months after um, season one and kind of like the, the dead of winter. Um, and, you know, if people have seen his new look. He's got that, he's got that coat to keep him, keep him warm. Now, you mentioned uh, six months between the end of season one and the start of season two. Can you at least tell us a little bit of what these characters have been up to in the intervening six months? Yeah, I mean, Bigby, um, as you saw, is, is now kind of in anger management. But kind of more importantly, he's been suspended from his role as sheriff and it's like protector of Fable Town. Yeah. Um, and, and Snow White, you know, at the end of, of season one, Snow White has kind of found herself in this new role as deputy mayor because you know, this sort of old administration is out, they were corrupt, and, and, and you kind of rooted that out. And 
she's got to fill those shoes now. And she's kind of got some big ideas on how that's going to happen, but it, it clashes with Big B's yeah. way of doing things. He's not uh, um, super uh, personable and, and kind of results to some, some, some tactics that are less than uh, kosher. So there's that, there's a little bit of tension there, and, and now he's in a new situation where he's not in, in Fable Town and he's kind of out yeah. there, and that leads him to meet this detective yeah. who um, is working on this case that kind of blurs the lines between uh, the Fable and Mundy world. Lot of stuff there. This is just the bare bones. If you guys miss this man, you need to really listen to what he said there. That is a lot of details on the story. We have the plot a little bit revealed as well in that statement. So firstly, this is Nick Herman from Ad Hoc Studios. Ad Hoc, remember, is responsible for the story, Telltale's doing the engine and like the pipeline for the game. So each of these two companies are, you know, merged together. Ad hoc is comprised of old Telltale employees. The new Telltale games is pretty much 50% old Telltale employees. So you have them both together. And a lot of the people at Ad hoc who are doing the story worked on the original Wolf Among Us. So you should be very, very excited that the original team is continuing on with the sequel. So one of the biggest things I want to take note of there is that they also said in that statement that I just showed, this game is a prequel to the comics. That is an interesting thing. So all you people that have read the comics that think there's certain things that happen in the comics, remember, this is a prequel to the comics. But in terms of the game, to the first game, it is six months after the ending events of The Wolf Among Us 1. So, also, we find out in that statement that Bigby has been suspended from his role as sheriff slash protector of Fabletown. We can make an assumption that is likely related to the events in the trailer of Bigby fighting the Wizard of Oz characters. And it was known in the trailer, the anger management head basically said, Miss White said things went badly. So what we saw in the trailer was only a little sneak peek of how bad things got. And Snow White has now been revealed as the deputy mayor of Fable Town after the ending, you know, of season one and all the corruption that took up Snow White takes the reins of being Deputy Mayor now, and obviously she has more responsibility, and the stuff Bigby's doing, his old ways and stuff, is not setting well with Snow White, and you see that there's conflict between the two, which is why we can assume Snow White pretty much said, Bigby, you're going to anger management until we get things sorted out. We're going to suspend you as sheriff, and we're putting you in anger management classes. So you see what I mean? Things are starting to get very, very interesting with the story. And this leads Bigby to go away from Fable Town, and he meets this detective, which we will talk about very shortly here, who this is. They would actually did reveal who this was. And this case that this detective is working on will blend the Fable world and the Mundy world. So we're going to see, it looks like a big portion of this plot is going to be centered around the Fable and Mundy worlds coming together. Let's actually read the description from the Telltale website here very shortly. Play as Bigby, the big bad wolf and sheriff of Fable Town, as you return to a gritty detective noir world where there are no fairy tale endings. The Wolf Among Us 2 picks up six months after the events of Season 1. It's winter in New York City, and a new case threatens to cross the lines between Fable Town and the NYPD. Here we go. That is looks to be the main premise of the plot is that we're going to see an intertwine of the Fable World and the New York Police Department together. How you choose to approach it could determine the future of the Fable community. So you're going to see hopefully hopefully this means choices are going to matter a lot more in this than past Telltale titles. And barring any major surprises, it's also now confirmed Bigby Wolf is the main playable character. I did hear rumors and people were saying, oh, maybe Snow White will be a playable character as well. Unless they maybe, you know, do a surprise moment with that. I don't really see that happening. So we're playing as Bigby once again. So excited, excited. 2023. Which characters are returning? You talked about. Snow, obviously, like there's you know certain characters that we would expect to be there, but can you confirm anyone that that is going to be there is sure. not going to be there? Can you deny? Can you say who's not in the game? <laughs> <laughs> we could we could probably talk a little bit about who else is going to be there. Okay. Obviously, as you said, uh, Bigby and Snow will be back reprising their roles. Um, 
And then there's some fan favorites like Buffkin uh, that'll be there. And then there's some new characters that we're, that we're introducing that you'll see in the trailer. Um, do you have any favorites from season well, one? I was going to say there's some T's of maybe some Oz-related things, right? There are some Oz characters in, in the uh, game that are big additions. So if they're in the trailer, does that mean they might be in the I game? I think we can probably <laughs> confirm that. You know, the, the other sort of big character that we're introducing is um, a detective, uh, Fei Liang. She's a NYC, uh, New York City police detective who's basically in the middle of uh, a case that doesn't quite look right. And once Big B gets his eyes on it, it's like clear, oh, like something's leaking out uh -huh. into, into the city. Um, so, so in terms of characters, they talked about not much. We got a couple details. So Big Man Snow, of course, we know they're coming back. Then we got one returning character confirmed. It wasn't probably the one you expected, but Buffkin was confirmed as a returning character. I felt like he wanted to say more, but <laughs> you know they just cut it off right after Buffkin. So Buffkin's back. That is confirmed. They also confirmed the characters in the trailer are the Oz characters. They didn't, again, they didn't specify if all of them are, but, you know, those characters are going to make an appearance in the game. So, you know, Tin Man, Scarecrow, and Dorothy. Again, some people still don't think that woman's Dorothy. I still believe it 100%, but we'll see. Again, this game's about mystery and surprises. Who knows? And then we have one major new character that goes by the name Fei Leung. She is... Probably that detective they were talking about earlier that was referenced as the detective that's going to be, you know, that Bigby's going to run into and they're going to have this case that's going to merge the Mundy and the Fable worlds together. Like Oz characters, we talked about that. Um, they're going to be in there doing, I don't know how much you can say, like, is this, are we looking just at like episode one here in this trailer or is this kind of across the season or like, what can you tell us? The trailer's pretty focused on episode one to okay. set up where we're going in this season. Okay. Yeah, so. yeah, but I mean, if, if they're in the beginning, you could probably expect to see them again a little bit later. We would hope so. I, I don't think we would introduce such cool characters and then <laughs> <laughs> not use them. Not yeah. use them. Never know what happens in episode one. So they also confirmed a majority of that footage that was shown in the trailer is from episode one. The Oz characters will be making a big appearance in episode one, and they are now, we can confirm it, they will be in future episodes as well, so it seems like they are going to be side villains. I don't think they're the main villains in this, but I definitely think, you know, how the Crooked Man had his list of associates. We could assume maybe the Wizard of Oz characters would be some of those associates to the main villain, which we will probably not know for some time. I hope they keep that secret, honestly. From a, a gameplay perspective, though, can you talk a little bit about, like, the Telltale style um, it's still the same gameplay style in terms of, you know, dialogue and choices and things like that. Like, is, yeah. with Unreal, does it allow more kind of gameplay, for lack it, of a better It term? definitely yeah. gives us more options, but yeah. I mean, you know, people should, you know, I, I think there's, there's a delicate balance we're going to have to walk of, like, you know, taking advantage of all this sort of new opportunity right. and, and space. For, um, but also, you know... Not a third-person action game. Yeah, you know, we got to keep it sort of uh, rooted in its foundation yeah. and, like, what people loved about the first one. But there are definitely going to be some additions. There's going to be some... You know, we, we, we took a look at everything and we kind of assessed whether or not it was intentional or if it was something that was just the way we had to make it, in, you know, in prior games. Well. So for the gameplay, they confirmed there are going to be improvements compared to past Telltale titles, which I am so excited to see. But they are honoring the past, which I do love to see. It's still going to be you know, the same old Telltale style, but there's going to be those improvements with the new engine and obviously the new technology. It's been such a long time since the original. So I'm expecting maybe some detective mode, some cool interactions, you know, just maybe even some combat. You know, the final season of The Walking Dead introduced some of that, but I want to see fighting as Big B. It would be very fun, not just, you know, QTE button mashing. I, you know, we need something better than that. Characters, I'm sure you were curious about where the writers were going to take them yeah. in season two. We know that this is six months sort of after the end of season one, so I don't know what you can say of what you've recorded or what you know, but uh, can you give us a little bit on sort of, you know, the, where the characters are at? Well, I can say you can expect some conflict. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, the, the boss lady here, it turns out, has uh, put our favorite sheriff on uh, kind of a timeout. So the players will be able to expect to explore more about Bigby than maybe they were able to in the first season. 
and uh, really let him sort of branch out into the bigger world, figure out uh, what he thinks is right and wrong, what he thinks is good and bad. Yeah. Versus what Snow tells him is good and bad. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, conflict. Yeah, yeah I think there's going to be a, a shift in the dynamic between the two of them. I mean, in season one, Snow is just finding her footing at the business office, and together they uncover all this corruption, which Snow is driven to do something about, but doesn't quite know how. So in season two, we see she's now deputy mayor, she's stepped up, she has power now, and I don't think she, she, she doesn't want to blow it. So she doesn't want to be seen as playing favorites, and that might add some tension to their relationship. God forbid. <laughs> well, I, I, I love making this right now. I know you're busy recording, you know, putting together all these, uh, you know, the amazing dialogue and, and all the fun oh, stuff. Thank God. Be. I know, but that's uh, that's a great thing for fans today. It's like we saw the trailer, the game looks amazing. Yeah. You guys are in the studio now working on it, and 2023. We're going to get five new episodes. Can't wait. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> no. All right. Well, thanks, guys. And we look forward Thank to uh, hearing you uh, next year in The Wolf Among Us Season 2. Yeah. It will be worth the wait. Yeah. Monday. I, I, I can't wait for people to play it. <laughs> so those are the voice actors of Big B and Snow, Adam Harrington and Ernie Bet. They basically talked about the six-month time skip and what it's going to mean to the characters. So... Adam Harrington, who voices Big B, said there that Big B has been put on, in quotes, timeout from the boss lady to Snow White. Snow White, obviously, getting this new deputy mayor role has definitely led into some conflict and led to this change. And you're finally seeing that Snow has a lot more responsibility to play. Aaron, you've had said there that Snow has a lot and it's gonna be hard to balance it. And obviously, Big B and her, it's gonna be conflict, a lot of conflict. And Snow's got a lot more responsibility, she doesn't wanna blow it. And the voice actor, Big B, said at the end there, it will be worth the wait. And I firmly believe that in my heart of hearts that even if we gotta wait till late 2023, the end product will be worth it. Why they take all this time, it will be worth it in the end, I promise. And I'm confident in that. So what has happened in the past two years? I think fans, you know, have, have nervously been uh, hoping to, you know, see more on it. And I know we've been talking over the years, and it's taken you guys a couple of years to get to this point. What has that journey been like? Well, we had quite a bit of work to do to stand the company back up and yeah. just get the basic things back in place. Um, but most of the time, the creative team's been in pre-production on Wolf Among Us 2. Yeah, I mean... We had a lot of time, um, fortunately, on this to kind of really focus on the story and the creative and make sure that, you know, we're set up for success here. And, you know, I can't really overstate how important that was for this. Um, I think, you know, a sort of Telltale Games Pass and Wolf 1 were kind of, you know, laying the train track as, as the train's going. And, yeah. and now we're able to kind of look at the whole season and really be, you know, um, do it justice and, and make sure that we're happy with what we have before we hit. Do you have the whole uh, five episodes? Oh, yeah, 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 How yeah. many it's episodes? All... Do we know how many episodes we get? We well, get five episodes. Five episodes. Okay, okay, I don't know. <laughs> all right, cool. So, so you've sort of yeah. thought, you've thought through the arc of the five. Yeah, how it, honestly, how it yeah. should be done, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, I, but we have everything figured out now, and now it's just about executing, and that's where we're at right now. And we saw, you know, in the trailer, 2023, so you're calling the ball for, for next year, not this year with it. Where are you at right now in development? Well, we're in, I mean, we're in production. We're actively doing motion capture shoots and, and putting together the, the game. Um, and we haven't named a date in 2023 yet because yeah. we'll ship it when it's right yeah. instead of when we need to. No, but it's nice to, it feels like, you know, you've got the stories outlined, as you said. Now it's really just sort of piecing that all together and figuring out the cadence. So since the end of 2019, Telltale has been in pre-production with The Wolf Among Us too. It hasn't been worked on for so, so long. People think, oh, it's been worked on since, the, like, 27... No. Since the end of 2019. Then we gotta remember, right when they started this pre-production, remember what happened a couple months later. COVID-19 definitely was a major impact and why it's taken so long for Telltale to get back. You know, they were starting the company up and they're working on The Wolf Among Us 2 because that little teaser thing they revealed in this live stream, that little teaser thing that they showed was literally, like, the first thing they had for this game. There was literally nothing else really done for the wolf among us too at that point also they do say all five episodes the story is all done now it's just about putting that story and putting it on screen that is all they have to do so the story's all there it's all done five episodes 2023 
so dang excited for that. Where well, they confirmed game is in production, motion capture, all that stuff's being done, but the CEO, Jamie Otley, said that they want to make sure the game is ready when it drops. That's why they haven't announced a specific date yet. They want to make sure it's ready when it's shipped out. So I'm glad they're taking their time. And being episodic, I know one of the things that I guess sometimes was an advantage back in the day was like you could take feedback from people on one episode and inform the next one, right, or the story or whatever. You're yeah. still planning to do this as episodes, but like more compressed, like all, all together, right? Yeah, we'll release episodically, but we'll be done with all the episodes before we release the first one. So it'll be a regular cadence. Yeah. Uh, we're really after, you know, giving the audience the, the water cooler moments where they can discuss what happened last week or the week okay. prior and, and anticipate what's coming in the next episode. Interesting. This is interesting of you to say, like, you're going to effectively have them all finish and then release them out there. So what does that mean, Nick, in terms of, like, cadence? Is that, it's like, sounds like you're talking about number of weeks sort of like street streaming shows that they'll come out? I think so, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if we have it exactly nailed down just yet, but you know, I think iteration was always key at Telltale to make these things work. So we're just taking that iteration and bringing it you know, internal instead of sort of blasting it out to everyone. We kind yeah. of sort of take that process and just make, put it in a space where we can you know, be, you know, make sure the quality is reliable and, yeah. and we get, still get the feedback from our fans. I love that though as a true season, as you said, like water cooler wise, like hey, here's a couple months where we're gonna get to play all this together as yep. a community and enjoy it. So one of my biggest success stories out of this entire stream was this moment. Telltale confirmed it. The episodic release genre lives on. I know a lot of people, especially like Strange True Colors, man, I want the full game. I don't want to wait for episodes. And I understand, I get it. But one of the biggest things for my channel and YouTube and all y'all that watch this was the waits. You guys know during The Walking Dead, that was some of the greatest moments of my life, just waiting for new episodes. I know waiting, who would know waiting would be so exciting? Just the theories, the discussions, the emotional impact waiting and just discussing what people had on you. And then, you know, that midnight getting ready for a new episode release is just, there's no better feeling in my opinion than getting ready for that. Yes. So, Episodic releases. The game will be done in full, but we will be getting episodic releases. So episode one will be dropping sometime next year, and then we'll have to wait. And they did say they don't have it nailed down yet, but a couple weeks probably will be, maybe two to four weeks. Could be once a month. We'll have to see. But that's probably what we're looking at for estimates. But man, that is just so awesome that they're doing that still. I'm so happy. So, that's everything from the stream that I wanted to discuss. We're going to talk about one or two little more things here. We're gone 22 minutes, so, you know, wrapping up near the end of the video here. So, let's just discuss some closing thoughts. So, the platforms are as follows for The Wolf Among Us 2. These are subject to change, but Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, PS5, PS4, and Epic Game Store. Now, the Epic Game Store thing I really do want to talk about really quick. A lot of people have been complaining about it and like, oh my goodness, ew, Epic Games Store. It's not set in stone yet. And I'll show, I'll throw up a tweet here where Telltale basically said they had to put that on their screen for partners and stuff. But right now they say it's on leading consoles and PC. Epic Games Store is very likely to be PC exclusive for The Wolf Among Us 2. But considering the Epic Games is paying for a portion of this game, Epic Games is sponsored this. So. Same with The Walking Dead and with Skybound Games. Epic Games came in and helped, you know, Skybound pay off so they could finish up the final season. And with this game, Epic Games is coming in clutch again with that. So, for certain, it's on the Epic Games Store. As for Steam, we are going to have to wait and see. It is not confirmed yet if it's going to be Epic Games exclusive at launch. I do think, inevitably, even if it is Epic Games exclusive at launch, it will come to Steam. So, I'll keep you guys up to date with that when we get information on that. But that's what we know right now for the platforms. All right, so if there's anything I missed, you could leave it down below in the comments. 24 minute video. If you guys knew me here, be sure to drop a like and subscribe. That was a long one, but I wanted to discuss it all and give you guys my thoughts on everything we know so far in The Wolf Among Us 2 based on this reveal event. And we'll have a lot to discuss based on certain things said here. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys later. Follow me on social media down below, stay connected and have a great one. Peace.